welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel uh, so here i am here uh, going to discuss one of the most important topic that's not very frequently discussed that's a maternal cardiac arrest or you can call it as cardiac arrest in pregnancy uh, so uh, the objective of uh, objectives of my talk will be uh, what are the basic challenges that we are facing in a uh, maternal cardiac arrest uh, what are the different algorithms you have you know there are two association there is uk association as well as american heart association so what are the difference between uh, these algorithms uh, anything major there is some changes and you should know uh, most important we all know regarding a normal cardiac arrest the hs and t's but in a maternal cardiac arrest what are the additional things that you need to consider and most importantly what are the changes in the cpr technique if you want to have any changes or is a routine CPR technique that you need to follow and a word about perimortem cesarean section. So this is what I will be doing in the next uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. So why this topic is important as uh, uh, you know it's 1 in 1200 uh, uh, women admitted for delivery in US suffer from cardiac arrest. So that's the status in the US. So that is around uh, when, when you have a maternal cardiac arrest it's almost like 42 percentage mortality. The risk of death following a cardiac arrest in pregnancy is extremely high for both mother as well as the child but both can be resuscitation if a fast action is being taken. So that's the main reason why we are discussing it today. Cardiac arrest is managed by a resuscitation and uh, you need to know something called as perimortem cesarean section or something called as emergency hysterostomy. So uh, these are the important things that you should be knowing. So what are the challenges? When you look we start with the anatomical challenges. There is lot of challenges in the airway uh, because uh, of the physiological changes that there's a lot of weight gain that is going to happen in pregnancy during pregnancy and physiologically there is 20 percent increase in oxygen consumption and 40 percentage increase in the cardiovascular metabolism to accommodate the fetus and there is a lot of altered level of hormones like progesterone estrogen during pregnancy can also restrict air passages and exacerbate the danger associated with a maternal cardiac arrest. So that's a big problem that uh, uh, the anatomical and physiological changes that is going to happen uh, during pregnancy. So this is a pictorial representation of what I have said. So there is an increase of 50 percentage of cardiac output, blood volume increased by 30 to 50 percentage, systemic vascular resistance there is a decrease in that and minute ventilation increases by 50 percentage and functional residual capacity there is decreases by 20 percentage. So they don't tolerate much of a hypoxia and oxygen consumption increased by 20 percentage. On the other side there is increased circulation demand during CPR, dilutional anemia, decreased oxygen carrying capacity, sequestration of blood during CPR compensatory respiratory alkalosis and decreased blood buffering capacity and uh, rapid development of hypoxia that's what i said they can't have a good minute ventilation they'd have decrease in the functional residual capacity so they'll rapidly deteriorate and uh, rapid development of hypoxia so these are the challenges that we what we have in case of a maternal cardiac arrest so coming to the important causes when you look into the causes uh, this is from the uh, UK guidelines. So you just see the hypoxia. We all know that the major cause of cardiac arrest, the 4H and 4Ts for the UK guidelines and 5H and 5T for the American Heart Association guidelines. When you look at the Hs and Ts, hypoxia, we all know that these are the reasons for hypoxia. In pregnancy, there are something specifically that you need to look in for. When you have a respiratory issue like pulmonary embolism, failed intubation, aspiration, heart failure, anaphylaxis, Eclampsia, very very important, pulmonary edema and even it can be after a seizure also the patient can have a hypoxic uh, cardiac arrest. Coming to hypovolemia, very challenging again hemorrhage, obstructive, remember concealed, abnormal uh, uh, placentation, uterine rupture, actony, splenic uh, artery bar, hepatic artery rupture, aneurysm rupture and coming to the other circulatory issues like cardiac arrhythmia they are very prone to develop the stress cardiomyopathy myocardial infarction and also very prone to have sepsis a purpural sepsis distributive sepsis high regional block or anaphylaxis if you are giving a high regional block for pregnancy that all can precipitate a possible causes for your uh, hypovolemia relating to the cardiac arrest coming to hypo or hyperkalemia also consider you should always remember blood sugar sodium calcium and magnesium levels but you all know regarding hyperkalemia what are the major reasons for hyperkalemia hypothermia as for normal for any other individual tamponade aortic dissection peripartum cardiomyopathy this is what i said trauma and coming to thrombosis specifically amniotic fluid embolism pulmonary embolism mi or air embolism and coming to toxins local anesthetic toxin 
magnesium toxicity when you are treating for eclampsia and you are giving a lot of magnesium sulfate that itself can precipitate a cardiac arrest so you should know what is the antidote that's a calcium gluconate and if the patient is on some illicit drug use so that also can uh, uh, lead on to a cardiac arrest and tension pneumothorax uh, basically uh, when you are using a mixture of uh, 50% oxygen and 50% nitric oxide called as entonox in pre-existing pneumothorax patient that itself can be a disaster and trauma if it is pregnancy related uh, if it's not pregnancy it's any related trauma in pregnancy uh, you can have a tension pneumothorax leading into a cardiac arrest so these are the general causes that you need to consider and uh, again uh, these are the potential maternal cardiac arrest etiology a anesthesia complication we all learned regarding the a b c d e so a for your anesthetic complication b for bleeding C for your cardiovascular issues, D for the drugs that you are giving, and E for the embolism, and F for the fever, and G for the general non-obstructive cause, the classical HS and T's, whatever we discuss for any other patient, and H is for hypertension. So these are the things that you need to keep in your mind whenever you see a maternal cardiac arrest. So uh, coming to the HS and T, you are all aware, the uh, classical HS and T's, hypovolemia, hydroxia, hypoxia, hydrogen ions, hypo or hypokalemia, hypothermia, and then the tension pneumothorax, tamponite, cardiac tamponite, toxins, thrombosis, pulmonary, as well as coronary. So these are the HS and T's of cardiac arrest. Going to the next, so what you need to do in, so that's very important when you have a patient with maternal cardiac arrest. The first thing you need to activate your maternal cardiac arrest team. Your obstetrician should be available. Your pediatrician or the neonatologist should be available. And the moment you feel that it's a cardiac arrest in pregnancy, the first thing you need to do is the lateral displacement of the uterus. So there are two techniques why you can do the lateral displacement. Why you are doing this? We are trying to remove the vena cavall pressure so that the venous return will be there adequately during an event of cardiac arrest. So you can have a one hand technique. That's what I have been elicited in this picture with patient flat on her back and the response standing on the woman's right side and the responder pushes the woman's uterus away towards the patient left side so that's one technique this is called as one hand technique and there's another technique called as two hand technique with the patient on her back the responder standing on the woman's left side and the responder uses the two hands to pull the woman's uterus towards the patient side that's towards the patient's left side so that is the two hand technique what is seen in this picture so you can either use a one hand technique or you can do a two hand technique whichever is comfortable for you but this is very important the lateral uterine displacement is the first thing that you need to keep in your mind when you have a maternal cardiac arrest so now coming to the algorithm so this is the aha algorithm what has been uh, shown here so you have uh, the standard resuscitation protocol you have started your bls you are continuing your high quality cpr your uh, defibrillation when it is indicated there is no changes in all those things and other ACLS intervention as and when required like adrenaline all the drugs that is required you have given and most importantly you have assembling the maternal cardiac arrest team and consider the etiology of cardiac arrest so I've told you what are the uh, various etiology of uh, cardiac arrest and uh, you need to remember you need to perform certain maternal interventions and perform some obstructive interventions also so first one maternal interventions what do you need to keep in your mind perform an airway management administer 100% oxygen place an IV line above the diaphragm very very important if uh, receiving magnesium, IV magnesium sulfate for preeclampsia, you need to stop that and you need to give either calcium chloride or calcium gluconide. So that's the maternal interventions that you need to do. On the other side, you have the obstructive interventions. What do you need to do? Provide continuous lateral uterine displacement. That's what I have shown you in the last picture, how to displace your uterus and detach the fetal monitors if already connected and prepare for a perimortem cesarean delivery. If you need a perimortem cesarean section, you need to go through. And on the other side, you need to continue BLS, high quality CPR need to be continued, defibrillation when indicated and other ACLS intervention, standard ACLS intervention. Coming to the, this side, that is the obstructive intervention. Again, you need to perform a perimortem cesarean section if the return of spontaneous circulation, that is ROSC, haven't achieved within the next five minutes. That's the, from the moment the cardiac arrest has been declared and within five minutes the ROC has not achieved that is the time you need to perform an emergency cesarean section and neonatal team should be ready to receive the neonate so that is your AH algorithm and already the potential etiology I have shown you uh, in the couple of slides back so let's go to the next one when you look into this this is again UK resuscitation council uh, guidelines it's almost the same but there are only certain changes they say regarding emergency hysterotomy only uh, if it is more than 20 weeks of gestation so again the timing everything is the same 
but only if after 20 weeks of gestation and these are the intervention drugs that you need to give like the doses fluid 500 ml bolus if there is hypotension adrenaline 1 mg every 3 to 5 minutes amiodarone after the third shock 300 mg iv atropine 0.5 to 1 milligram up to uh, 3 mg if a vagal tone is the likely cause because of your local anesthesia or uh, due to the sudden vasodilatation calcium chloride in case of an uh, Hyperkalemic cardiac arrest or due to hypermagnesemia, magnesium if you suspect a torse, 2 gram IV and thrombolysis for suspected pulmonary embolism. That's a huge difference. AHA guidelines, you don't see all those things but for UK guidelines, they suggest thrombolysis if you suspect potential cause of cardiac arrest as an uh, pulmonary embolism. And uh, when you have tranexamic acid, 1 gram IV and intralipid dimensional. If you think that it is due to the local anesthetic toxicity, you can give your intralipid dimensional 1.5 gram, 1.5 ml per kg IV bolus and uh, 15 ml per kg per hour as an IV infusion. So that is the uh, guidelines what is about the obstructive cardiac arrest. And again, this is the drugs that whatever I have said, uh, fluids, adrenaline, amiodarone, atropine, calcium chloride, magnesium, thrombolysis, Tranexamic acid, intralipid emulsion, all the doses has been clearly described here. And coming to the uh, perimortem cesarean section. So perimortem cesarean section is a life saving and should be performed at the site of arrest itself within 5 minutes. So that is very uh, important. So start planning by 4 minutes if ROC is not achieved. So uh, two uh, after your 5 cycle 1, 5 cycle 2. So one dose of adrenaline is over. You need to think that okay this patient might require uh, before your second dose of adrenaline you need to keep in your mind that this patient might require a perimortem cesarean section. So after your second pulse check that is almost 4 hours is over. You need to see that uh, the patient uh, uh, needs a perimortem cesarean section and maternal resuscitation effort should be continued during the procedure. So that's the uh, very important key thing that you need to keep in your mind. And when you are working in an ED, these are the, just the list of equipments that you can keep it ready. If you have a lot of maternal cardiac arrest, that's going to happen once in your lifetime, maybe once or twice in your lifetime as a practitioner. But these are the things that you should be keeping ready. You can see on the left side a scalpel with number 10 blade, lower end of uh, Bellafour retractor, a pack of sponges, two kili clamps and needle divider, Russian forcep, suture and suture scissors. Just this is a simple list that you can keep it uh, available in your ear. On the other set, uh, you need you know, neonatal resuscitation, overweight warmer, neonatal airway supply, umbilical access and medication. So this is a, just a simple list that I have uh, uh, prepared it for you. So uh, the most important thing what you need to remember is that you need whenever a cardiac arrest occur, you need to have certain maternal uh, interventions to be done and there are certain obstructive intervention need to be done. The most important thing you need to keep in your mind that your standard ACLS management should be continuing and three important things that you need to call, remember, call your obstetric and neonatal team immediately. Second, you need to keep the lateral uterine displacement continuously and third you need to think about the causes of cardiac arrest in a pregnant lady what are the potential causes of maternal cardiac arrest is what you need to look in for and finally always remember something called as perimortem cesarean section or emergency hysterostomy uh, when you need to do and what is the time that you need to do that's it from me thank you for your patient listening